Thank you for joining us on the Sports on Prime. I'm Gary Al Smith, and we are two days to the start of the FIFA World Cup, and it's drowning all the discussions in the country and around the world, of course. The Super Eagles of Nigeria, they have arrived in Russia, and they are raring to go in what should be a good tournament for them, they hope. Seem to win the fashion stakes with their incredible travel outfit. Captain John Obi Mikhail led his side to Russia in the green and white attire at that featured football below the collars. The squad arrived in Essentuki last night wearing this traditional outfit and look ready to begin their Group D campaign against Croatia on Saturday. This is Nigeria's sixth appearance at the World Cup since making a debut show at the USA in 1994. The Super Eagles were the first team to qualify from Africa, seeing off continental champions Cameroon. Nigeria then showed the quality by winning a friendly last year against Argentina, their final Group D opponents. And that's it. Still in Africa, and let's go and check out what's happening with Tunisia. We've been doing previews of all the countries, and we are going to that country now to speak to a journalist from um, that side of the continent. Suhail Kimira writes for Sky Sports, among others, and he joins us. Hello, Suhail. Hello, Gary. How are you? Hello, Doing Gary. well, How thank you? you. You are just a couple of days to the first game um, of Tunisia in the World Cup. How are preparations going? And how, first of all, are people excited in your country ahead of their kickoff? Exactly. We're only about four, six games until Tunisia's first game in this World Cup versus a, a big opponent, England, one of the best teams in the world. Uh, I'm not going to lie, tensions are high here in Tunisia, but people are very optimistic about it. A lot, it seems that general atmosphere, people here genuinely believe that Tunisia does stand a good chance of accomplishing something. Right. Tunisia is in the same group with Panama and England as well. What are the chances, really, especially how do people feel that the, the, the team is going to fare? Can they go out of that group alive? Yeah, people are very optimistic about this group. They're in the same, even though it's a very tough group, we're in the same group with England, Belgium, and Panama. A lot of people do believe that Tunisia might actually accomplish something. This is, this is their fifth World Cup appearance. And their first qualified since 2006, that's 12 years that Tunisia has been absent from the World Cup. So expectations are high. People actually, like a lot of uh, people in the sports field, do believe that we can actually manage to, to, to get a victory against Panama, hopefully tie against, against England or Belgium. With four points, we should... We are hoping to qualify the next round, and this is not just this is not just me and everyone, of course, believe. But the national team coach Nabi Maadoud has recently announced that Tunisian expectations are not just to go next uh, stage world, but to actually they're hoping to qualify for the quarterfinals. So that's going to be a great accomplishment if that happens. Quarterfinal, he says they are expecting. Thank you very much, Suhail Kimira joining us from Tunisia. Thank you, Gary. Moving on and to South America. Ronaldo, the original Phenomeno, Luis Nazario da Lima is tipping his beloved Brazil to win the World Cup. I think my favorite, of course, Brazil, but not because I'm Brazilian, but I think Brazil are playing very good. Uh, Spain, is playing very well and Germany always is strong but you know World Cup is so difficult tournament and um, we have also Argentina is always strong France with a very young team um, yeah I, I, but I hope Brazil can win yeah, it's a long time since 2002 and, uh, I think it's time 
Meanwhile, what about France? They say that of all the five African countries going to the World Cup, we can add France as number six, obviously, because a lot of their players hail from here or they have ancestry from Africa. They're optimistic as emerging as leaders of Group C. Group C of the 2018 FIFA World Cup has the potential to be a tightly fought affair. Undoubtedly, the most highly rated side in the group is France, who will be taking part in their 15th World Cup. They are former champions of the event, having won their own tournament in 1998, while their most recent appearance was at Brazil 2014, where they were knocked out in the quarterfinals. Le Bleu had a near-perfect qualification campaign, finishing atop UEFA's Group A with 23 of a possible 30 points. And their final friendly ahead of the Russia Spectacular saw them draw one all with the USA. France are the favourites to advance to the knockout stages, but the second team is a lot less clear-cut. Australia are making their fifth appearance at a World Cup. They failed to advance past the group stages four years ago in Brazil, while their best finish was a round of 16 showing at Germany 2006. The Socceroos squeezed into the tournament after edging past Honduras in an inter-confederation playoff. But they'll be happy with their final warm-up match, having defeated Hungary 2-1 in Budapest. Like the Aussies, Peru are also making their fifth appearance at a World Cup. However, their last outing was at Spain 1982, where they were knocked out in the group stage. Their best finish was a quarter-final berth at Mexico 1970, and have had a dramatic build-up to Russia. After a nervy qualification process, captain Paulo Guerrero was ruled out of the tournament, his previous doping suspension extended by the Court of Arbitration for Sport. A seesaw affair ensued and after an appeal backed by the captains of each Group C side, the striker was reinstated to the team. Their last friendly ahead of the event saw them draw 0-0 with Sweden in Gothenburg. The Swedes also held the final team of Group C, Denmark, to a goalless draw in their penultimate World Cup warm-up match. The Danes are also back for a fifth time at the tournament, but their last appearance was at South Africa 2010, where they couldn't make it out of their group. They reached the quarterfinals in 1998, while unbelievably, they last lost a game on the 11th of October 2016. So go into the tournament in red hot form. Right, so the World Cup is still on, and just to remind you, Joy FM has the rights for English in Ghana, the only official broadcasters. We will be providing you commentary of all the major matches, in fact, all the matches from the 14th of June. And also, myjoyonline.com forward slash World Cup is the bespoke website we've created just for the tournament. Follow us on our social media handles where we'll be providing live tweets of the matches as well with very colorful artworks and videos, Joy997FM and Joy Sports GH on Twitter. From tomorrow, our reporter in Russia will be sending us videos from there as well. Speaking of Russia, remember Andre Shavin? He came to England and had a great time for a while with Arsenal. He's hoping that his country can advance from their group, that's Group A. Uh, you know, I know in England you always expect uh, you will uh, uh, raise the trophy, you know, and uh, regarding the offensive, I think uh, very good, you know, the Kane, uh, uh, Dele Alli, you know, some, some other players, but uh, regarding defensive, you know, I, ha uh, I have some concerns, I don't see that uh, uh, they're strong enough uh, in the middle of defense, you know, the fullbacks are good for me, you know, even they're strong. But uh, in the middle, I don't see the good center backs there. Thank you for joining us for the sports. The news continues. I'm Gary Al Smith.